Well, originally we started to solve a local problem, the number of people applying to read computer science. And we wondered why this might be. We thought it might be because people nowadays no longer play with computers in the way they used to. So we thought maybe if we made a computer that was cheap enough that people wouldn't feel inhibited about breaking it and that kids could buy from their pocket money, we would improve the world. This computer was launched in 2012 and cost around 25 US dollars. It's the size of a smartphone and can be connected to a television screen to work as a normal desktop computer. Its developers at the University of Cambridge in the United Kingdom gave it a playful name, Calling to Mind a Toy. Raspberry Pi is a small low-cost computer originally designed for educational uses, but it has many other uses. People have used them for microscopes, controlling 3D printers, for weather stations, all sorts of uses. From a personal computer to run video games to a technological solution for the developing world, it's a short step. Today, Raspberry Pi allows scientists to build cheap and reliable weather stations, where until now there have been none. I'm Adam Gleave from the University of Cambridge. I'm working for the Raspberry Pi Foundation over the summer. My project is to develop a low-cost, reliable weather station for use in rural Africa. This will help farmers and climate scientists. Adam is working in partnership with the Trans-African Hydrometeorological Observatory. Together, they aim to make it possible for Africa to leapfrog from being one of the least monitored to one of the best monitored continents in the world. At the moment, uh, there's very little monitoring of weather data in Africa. Uh, there's around 200 automated weather stations, a third of which are broken. In contrast, in Europe, there's over 2,000 weather stations. Farmers need to know the current weather and also need to have accurate weather forecasts in order to know when to plant their crops. Climate scientists require accurate data in order to build an accurate model of a world's climate. When it comes to rural areas, new technologies need to be tailored to the specific features of a difficult environment and to the needs of a widely dispersed population. One, one big challenge we've been looking at is working out how to get the data from these weather stations back onto the internet because there's very limited mobile coverage in a lot of Africa. So we've been exploring options such as satellite data and we're also thinking that we could actually bring the internet to the village where the weather station is deployed. In Africa, agriculture needs accurate real-time weather data to help farmers maintain and increase their productivity in the face of climate change. The new weather station measures a host of climate variables, including rainfall, air temperature, wind speed and direction, and solar radiation. So at the moment we've got various prototypes in several stages of development. One thing we're really excited about is a rain gauge, which is based around a small covered microphone. This has no moving parts, so it's highly reliable and should function much longer than conventional rain gauges and without any maintenance. And it works by listening to the rain falling and determining its size and how many raindrops are falling in a minute. By 2022, the project aims to deploy 20,000 self-powered weather stations across sub-Saharan Africa. The raw data will be made available on the internet for use by scientists, educators and African government agencies. Project managers are now seeking 2.7 million US dollars of funding, but they say that by 2019 the whole project will be self-funding and profitable, with revenues from where the data and where the stations. We're aiming for each weather station to cost in the region of 500 US dollars. Uh, current commercial weather stations cost around 15,000 US dollars. So this is a big difference. But we think with modern components, we should be able to produce uh, design with equivalent capabilities, but at a much lower cost. 
uh, and if you're providing services to several thousand users and each weather station would be able to serve a 30 kilometer wide area, then it, it very quickly pays for itself.